Hello, I'm Silicon Thaumaturgy, and welcome to Stable Diffusion Basics. Today, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about inpainting in Stable Diffusion in the automatic 1111 interface, including what each and every single setting does. For those among you that like to get the very basic and then dash off like Sonic, here are the absolute bare bones for inpainting. First, cover the part of the image you want to change with the brush. This is called the mask, and it will be on the quiz later. You can make this brush bigger or smaller with a brush slider. Next, set your denoising level. Think of this as how much you want the masked portion to change, with higher denoising resulting in more change. Then click Generate. Boom! You just impainted. But if you want to use Impaint well, you'll need to stay tuned because there is so much more to it. But first, let's clear up some confusion about inpainting models. There are specific models optimized for inpainting for base stable diffusion and some custom models. While these models do offer better performance, you can still get good performance without them. On to the settings. While there are many, many settings for inpaint, the good news is that many of them act just the same as they do for normal image generation. These settings are sampler, steps, batch number, batch count, CFG, and seed. There are some exceptions when using inpainting scripts, but I won't get into those here. Of the relevant settings, First, we are going to talk about masking, the options for masking, and denoising. The mask is the area you cover with a paintbrush. For best results, I recommend only masking a single continuous area at one time. There are two ways to create masks outside of the Stable Diffusion Web GUI. The first way is to edit the image in external photo editing software to have transparent pixels. Once uploaded, the transparent pixels will become the mask. The second way is a bit trickier. You can create a black and white image to act as your mask, which confusingly uses the white section as the mask instead of the black. You will also need to change to the InPaint Upload tab and upload the base image and the mask file separately. After you finish your masking, you can choose to either InPaint only the masked area by selecting InPaint Masked, or you can InPaint everything except the masked area by selecting InPaint Not Masked. Mask Blur defines a region around your inpainted area where the original and inpainted results will be blended. What this does in practice is force your inpainted area to become more and more like your original. This can be useful if your inpainted area is obvious and you're struggling to get a consistent look. The Mask Blur is applied to the mask area. For smaller inpainted areas, you can blend the entire area by increasing Mask Blur, though with larger areas, the center will still be pure fill, latent noise, or latent nothing, and that neatly brings us to the most important settings for inpainting. Denoising and the four options for masked content. Original, Fill, Latent Nothing, and Latent Noise. If original is selected, this will use the area under the mask with no changes. This is going to be your go-to in most scenarios and will work well if you want to keep the general shape and color of the area, but adjust or enhance the details. Using original can give good results at any denoising level I recommend using between 0.3 and 0.8. Below 0.3, you're going to see very little change in the masked area. Above 0.8, the masked area is going to be mostly or completely replaced, and the other three options might be a better fit. The next three options will change the mask area in different ways. Latent noise will replace the contents of the mask area with the same noise used to generate images from scratch, which is essentially static. Latent Nothing will completely replace the area under the mask with a tannish color regardless of the image contents. Latent Noise and Latent Nothing both need denoising levels of at least 0.6 to get decent results, and you can take denoising all the way up to 1. If Fill is selected, then the area under the mask will be influenced by the proximity to other colors in the image. As you can see in these examples, the masked area on the blue side is slightly red and gets more red towards the center line. The masked area on the red side is slightly blue and gets bluer towards the center line, and the masked area in the middle is more blue on the left side and more red on the right side. For fill, you need somewhat high denoising to get decent results. At a minimum, you should have denoising at 0.5 or 0.6 and can take it all the way up to 1. But what if, even with the right denoising level for your mask treatment, in paint just can't get it right? Surely, there must be a better way. There is, but my name isn't Shirley. If you are trying to change the inpainted area into something drastically different, or just in a very precise way, 
you can edit the underlying image yourself to give Stable Diffusion a head start. You don't need to be a master artist and add lots of details, so the closer you get to what you want, the easier it will be for Stable Diffusion to take you to the finish line. Next, we are going to cover the settings for resolution and resizing. Before we start, there is one very annoying detail with resolution that you need to be aware of. Unfortunately, if you send an image you generate to InPaint, it will automatically set the resolution to the size of that image, though other settings won't be impacted. Resolution can work two different ways depending on your InPaint area setting. If you have InPaint area set to masked only, then the output image will stay at the resolution of the input image and you don't need to worry about resize modes. When using masked only on a larger image, you can lower the resolution to 512 by 512 or whatever your preference is to perform InPaint much faster than with the whole image. The downside to this is that at high denoising, it has a tendency to make the inputting portion a small version of the entire prompt. To combat this, you can change the prompt to focus on the precise thing you want inpainted, or increase the mask blur and do incremental changes. Mask padding is a variable that is only applicable when you have the mask only option selected. Increasing mask padding will effectively decrease the resolution in your inpainted area. Increasing this can help if you are getting too much stuff in your inpainted area but if you increase it too much, the inpainted area will end up looking low resolution. On the other hand, if you have inpaint area set to whole image, then the output image will have the resolution you set, whether it is larger or smaller than the original. If your resolution has a different aspect ratio than your original image, you will need to consider four options for your resize mode. Using just resize will stretch your image to fit the image resolution you set. I don't recommend using this. Just Resize Latent Upscale always gives me an error. Crop and Resize will cut off portions of your image to fit your aspect ratio. Out of the Resize models, you'll likely use this one the most often. Resize and Fill will add additional space on the sides of the image by stretching out the last pixels on that edge. Instead of doing this, it might be better to use the Outpainting script in the Image to Image tab. So now we've officially covered every single setting for inpainting. But before you go, let's do a quick review of common problems and what settings can help solve them. If inpainting is taking a long time, or your output isn't changing size when you don't want it to, inpaint masked only and reduce the resolution to 512 by 512 or your preference. But the trade-off is that you will likely need to tailor your prompt to the inpainted area specifically. If you can't get the inpainted area to be what you want, you can adjust the prompt to be more specific to your vision or manually edit the base image to a crude version of what you want. If the inpainted area isn't changing enough, you can increase denoising or switch to fill, latent noise, or latent nothing. Conversely, if the inpainted area is changing too much, you can decrease denoising, switch to original mask content, or increase mask blur. And that concludes the tutorial on inpainting. I hope this tutorial added another powerful tool to your arsenal and will help you generate better images. If it did, please like and subscribe, and if you have any other topics about Stable Diffusion you want to learn about, don't be afraid to leave a comment, and who knows, I might make a video about it. Till next time!